it's just another day that the Lord has kept me It's truly an honor to be able to give God's word once again. Amen. Amen. Uh, before I get into the word, I'm going to, to uh, say a short prayer. Bless the word. So the Lord gives me wisdom and direction. We can't take anything for granted, especially these times and days. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we do praise your magnificence, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your word as it comes forth this day, Lord. Let it be your words and not my words, Lord. Lord, just anoint me, Lord, this day as your word comes forth, Lord. Let your people, Lord, be able to receive, Lord, as your word comes forth, Lord. Lord, let your people be lifted up, Lord. Let Satan's strongholds be torn down, Lord. Lord, we claim this and decree it in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm going to be uh, starting uh, the scripture probably in uh, Psalms, the 91st chapter. But I'm going to be touching on a couple of different items as I go through the Word of God today. Of all the different things going on, the pandemic going around, all the uh, corruption and the evilness in the world presently, all the fear that's being instilled on people. You know, uh, this saves path. And there's been one very, very big disadvantage of the churches that's been going on. Uh, God's people have not been able to hold church. You know, you say, well, what's the big thing about that? But when uh, God's people are not assembled together to renew their strength, to renew their one with one another, then it makes a big difference. It makes a big impact. Yeah. Uh, scripture says in Psalms, the 61st chapter, says, Hear my cry, O God, yeah. and tend unto my prayer. From the ends of the earth where I cry unto thee, when my heart is overwhelmed, Lord, Lead me to that rock that is higher than I. The rock that is higher than I. That's Psalms uh, 61, verses 1 and 2. I just uh, quoted. Power of the mind. Power of actions. Power of words. These are three real significant things as they get into the Word of God. Power of the mind. You know, our mind, you know, God has told us already in the scripture, he's not given us a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. Yes, sir. But when you have so much fear being instilled in us mm -hmm. over the news media, all around, this whole surroundings, the environment, there's fear all around everywhere. Yeah. The scripture says in Philippians 2, 5, says, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. Yeah. What was the mind of Christ? That mind that stayed constant. You know, there's one good thing with all the different things that are changing, all the different things that we had to put up with and uh, say, oh, this is changing now. We can't do this. We can't go here. We can't do this. We got to act this way. The one thing that stays constant is God's word. Yeah. It is never going to change. The, the scripture says in Hebrews 13:8, it says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. That's not going to change regardless of what Satan is throwing out there. No, God's people have sometimes a tendency to be discouraged, you know, to be downhearted. You know, I'm looking now, we're seeing more and more commercials on TV with all these things for depression. You no, know, if you're depressed, no, no, tell your doctor to give you this. You know, we need to get ourselves back to the Word of God and grab and hold on to the Word of God because that's what's going to bring us through. Power of actions. You know, our actions. Speak louder than words. You know, we can say that, you know, we're Christians and we can uh, say, you know, oh, yeah, I'm, 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 I've got the faith. But our actions show that, especially in times like this. How do we react to what's going on? Do we put our faith in God? God has dealt us the, measure, the measure of faith. Do we put that faith where it belongs? Or do we start tending to, to pull toward where the world is? You know, this is a big decision that we have to make. Scripture says in 1 Corinthians 13, 11, when I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. Well, I put away childish things. Now it's time for us to put on the mind of Christ. 
to think like Jesus Christ, not like the world. Because the world's going to tell us, oh, you ought to be depressed. You know, we can look around, <laughs> all the destruction that's going on, all the fear that's going on, all the people that are downtrodden look like there's no hope. Let's throw up our hands and let's lay down and die. No. God is a God of life and of peace and of joy. You know, Galatians chapter 5 gives us the fruits of the Spirit. Those are the things. It starts out with love. We got to first love ourselves before we can love anybody else. Let's go to Psalms chapter 91 as uh, we begin to read in the scriptures. You know, uh, God gave me this uh, scripture once again uh, this morning uh, as I was uh, coming to church. Matter of fact, he gave me a couple of scriptures. I always say that, uh, you know, I write down, jot some scriptures down that the Lord has uh, given me at one point in time. But uh, I always tell people, the people that are sitting here, the people that are going to hear me, the message is for them. Not for those that don't hear it. The message is for the people that are going to hear this word today. Yeah. To uplift them, to encourage them. It says, he that dwells in the secret place in the most high, verse 1, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God, and him will I trust. Are we going to trust in the world or are we going to trust in God? That's a big decision that we have to make. And sometimes it seems like it's simple to do, but there's so many things that bombard us every day. You know, it seems like as soon as we get over one hurdle, there's another hurdle. Seems like, uh, you know, well, it should be over here in a month or two. Yeah. But it seems like it keeps getting sent because people refuse to use godly wisdom. Then we use manly wisdom. We have to use godly wisdom. Sometimes we have to uh, think about what we're doing. Think about where we're going. Think about who we're acting to. Sometimes we have to discipline ourselves to do that which we need to do in order to accomplish a goal. That goal is to get us, to allow us to continue to live. Yeah. That's very important. It says, surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the northland pestilence. We got pestilence going on now. Yeah. This pandemic, you know, it's got so many people scared to death. And some people have got to the point where I don't care anymore. Now, if I'm going to die, I'm going to die. No, that's the wrong attitude. God is the giver of life. Not the giver of death. We don't ever want to throw our hands up and give up. We got too much power. Power of our actions. How do we react in a situation like this? We react like God's people. We take a stand. We stand up. We allow ourselves to be fortified with God's word. And we take a stand knowing that if two or more agree. Now that hasn't went away. People have forgot that. The word of God is true. The word of God will always be true. Power words. What kind of words are we using? Are we using negative words? I don't know what's going to happen. Well, oh, woe is me. I'm so miserable. Our words defeat us. Our words don't allow us to accomplish that great goal of being victorious. Because we defeat ourselves. Power of words. There's so much in a word. So much word. We can encourage ourselves, we can encourage other people by words, or we can tear people down by our words as well. We can bring about defeat by our words as well. Psalms 19:14 said, Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Yeah. What kind of words are coming out of our mouth? You know, people say, I, I'm sorry I said that. You can't take words back once you say them. They're out there. They're floating around in space. It's hard to, to correct something once you put words out there. So we have to be very, very, we have to guard our minds because that's where the words start at. What we're going to say and what we're not going to say within our minds. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid of the the terror by night, or for the arrow that fly by day. A lot of fear going on right now. And then we have all the injustice that's in the world going right along with the pandemic. That's making things even worse. You don't know anymore who you can trust or who you can't trust. You know, who you can rely on, who you can't rely on. But let me tell you, you can always rely on God. 
You can always rely on God, knowing that God's not going to change. He's that constant that we need to set our pattern according to. Yeah. Not according to the world, but according to God. Nor for the pestilence, verse 6, that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wastes at noonday. It describes exactly what's going on right now, isn't it? Every day, you know, you watch the news, all the, well, this, stuff, this many people have died. You know, it's spreading, it's getting worse and worse and worse. You say, when's it going to end? When's it going to end? You know, there's one good thing I tell people all the time, think about it, that we have, regardless of what goes on in this world, Jesus is coming back one day. That's right. Amen. And all this is going to be done with. So this is just, uh, you know, things are going to pass. You know, we, we have the hope of knowing that we have eternal life. To our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. When we, once we have done what Romans 10 9 says, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in the heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. That doesn't change from day to day. That's once you have done that, then you have satisfied that which God requires in order for us to have salvation. Because of that blood that Jesus shed on Calvary. You know, uh, the scripture says in Isaiah, it says, All oh, we like sheep have gone astray. You know, that's sort of typical right now. Christians are running to and fro right now. People done got so relaxed, you know. You know, oh, I don't really have to go to church. I just, you know, maybe I get my boat powered up. You know, people think all the different things they can do except for worshiping God. Because now, you know, the churches haven't been in full mention. They've been shut down because of this pandemic. So people have come relaxed. And Satan's just laughing. He's just laughing because now he's got these Christians that he can run interference now. Because they're not staying on God's word no more. They haven't given God time to be in their lives no more. They put everything into place. They've listened to the news media. They've listened to the, our so-called government. That's leading us astray. Just like sheep. You know, that's why in the word of God it refers to people as sheep. Because sheep is a dumb animal. Sheep ne need a shepherd. And when the flock is not under the shepherd, when the flock is not gathering together for the shepherd to give them the word of God, to, to encourage them to lift them up, then they go astray. They end up in holes. They, they end up in snares. They end up everywhere they shouldn't be. Doing everything. Thinking everything. Doing everything they want to do except what God has called them to do. Because they think it's going to be, a, I'll, I'll do that tomorrow. I'll read my Bible tomorrow. You ought to read your Bible every day. There ought to be a scripture on your lips every time you get ready to go somewhere, go into one of these stores. Or go, there ought to be the word of God on you every time your children are getting ready to leave or one of your loved ones getting ready to leave the house. There ought to be the word of God on your lips. Not a worry, not a fear, not a doubt, but an encouragement, knowing that God's going to bring you through. If nobody else make it through, you ought to have that confidence in knowing God's going to bring me through. God's going to make it all right with me. God's going to do it for me. Because he's already promised in his word he's going to do it. God's not going to go back on what he said. The man may change. The day may change. The temperature may change. But God's not going to change. He's not going to change. He's that type of God that stays that constant. allows us to focus Allows us to be where we know, need to be. It says, A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. You believe that? If you don't, you ought to believe it. It's written in God's word. God put it in there because it's true. A thousand shall fall at thy side. We're seeing that going on right now. People so worried. Oh, what, am, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? We're going to keep our confidence in God. That's what we're going to do. We're going to know that God's going to bring us through. Because that's the type of God he is. Only with our eyes shall I behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high thy habitation. Yeah. There shall no evil befall thee. Neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. Strong words, aren't they? I just talked about words, didn't I? Power words. Put the word of God into action in your lives. Put the word of God in your mind so we can cause the action to come. Yeah. And the words to come, the right words. Know how to answer every man. Know how to answer yourself. 
When you talk to yourself, self, what am I going to do? I'm going to stand on God's word. That's what I'm going to do. Tell yourself that. Tell yourself I'm greater than the thing that's going on because I have Christ in me, the hope of glory. Yeah. Yeah, amen. Pandemic, God's going to bring me through. Yeah. Pandemic, God's going to keep me healthy. Pandemic, God's going to make sure that I have everything I need because yeah. yeah. he's already promised me that. Yeah. Know that for truth. Know that God's never going to leave you. God's never going to let you down. Regardless of what the news media is saying. Regardless of how bad it gets, know that God's going to watch over you and those that are your loved ones that you've been praying over. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. We have been made righteous by the blood of Jesus. That blood that will never lose its power. That blood that washed us whiter than snow. That blood that has given us eternal life and the victory. That blood that is powerful, most powerful. When we do communion on the first Sunday, that's what that represents. That shedding of blood that Jesus shed for us. Yeah. That blood that never loses power. That blood that gives us the authority now in this world. That blood that washes us whiter than snow. Even when we make mistakes, we have the opportunity now to ask for forgiveness and get ourselves up and move on out. We're an army. An army is always prepared. An army gets ready for the battle at hand. We're in a battle. We're in a warfare. But we got to stand like believers. Yeah. We can't back ourselves out. Verse uh, 11. He shall give his angels charge over thee to, give the, to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt thread upon the lion and the adder. The young lion and the dragon shall thou trample on the feet. Because thou hast set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life. Hear that? With long life. Say that. With long life. Will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. God's already told us in his word that he wish above, above all things that we prosper and be in health. Yeah. Yeah. He's already said that in his word. Why should we doubt anything that God says? Why should we allow ourselves to turn in any direction? God's given us a map. The ultimate map. The navigation equipment. To get where we need to be. We can't get off on the wrong path. We can't get off on the wrong direction. Allow Satan to, to cause us to be somewhere we shouldn't be. Yeah. Let ourselves be somebody. Let ourselves be what God wants us to be, not what the world wants us to be. We need to be stand up and be counted. You know, we need to put numbers on ourselves so people can count on us. That's good. That's good, Pastor. We have to be come, come out of the world. Tune ourselves with God. Untune ourselves with the world. You know, you know when you turn on your radio or your TV and there's something on you don't want to hear, what do you do? You change the station. There you, go. you turn to something that, that you want to hear, something you want to see. That's what we have to do in this world. We have to tune in to God. Right. Tune in to that which we want to hear, what we need to hear. That's good. Not what the, world, the garbage of the world is throwing out. Tune in to God. That's good. Isaiah 40, 31 says, But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. How many are fainting? How many are still walking and running? Yeah, we had to ask ourselves that question. Where do we want to be? Where do we want to be just tomorrow? Do we want to be on top of the mountain? You know, I hate you no know, hearing you know, someone climbing something. God's already moved the mountains out of the way. That's right. There ain't no need for us to climb nothing. It's already made available for us. God's put all the pieces together for us. There's no missing pieces to the puzzle. God's made everything what it needs to be. Look at the Psalms uh, 139, please. I know I'm all wound up today. But I've seen so much going on. Amen. You know, it it uh, frustrates me when I see uh, people being so ignorant. 
to God's word. Amen. People say, well, I don't, I don't care. You know, I don't care about nobody else. I'm just taking care of myself. You're going to need somebody else. Yeah. Amen. So you ought to start showing some love. What goes out comes back. That's right. That's right. It says, oh, Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. Thou hast known my down sitting and my uprising. Thou understandest my thought afar off. Thou compassest my path and my lying down and art acquainted with all my ways. So God knows us better than we know ourselves. He knows that. For there is not a word in my tongue, but, O oh Lord, thou knowest it all together. Thou set me behind and before thou laid thy hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain unto it. Whether shall I go from thee, from thy spirit, or whether shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. Yea, the darkness hide not from thee, but the, the night shineth as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to thee. For thou hast possessed my reins, thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise thee, for I am fearful and wonderful made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. My substance was not hid from thee, when I was made in secret and curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect, and in thy book all my memories were written, which in countenance were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. How precious also are thy thoughts unto me, O God! How great is the sum of them! If I should count them, they are more in number than the sand. When I awake, I am still with thee. Surely thou wilt slay the wicked, O God. Depart from me, therefore, ye bloody men. For they speak against thee wickedly, and thy enemies take thy name in vain. Do not I hate them, O God, that I hate thee. And am not I grieve with those that raise, rise up against thee. I hate them with perfect hatred. I count them mine enemies. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there be any wicked way in me. And lead me in a way everlasting. Aren't those powerful words? Aren't those powerful words? How the world will direct us, we're going to be off course. We're going to end up in a ditch. You know, and if we, we don't use godly wisdom, we're going to end up somewhere we don't belong, somewhere we don't need to be, somewhere we don't want to be. When we use godly wisdom, we're always in the right place at the right time, every time. That's the way God does us. That's the way God treats us. Because we're special. We're not just ordinary people. We're God's people. We're special people. We ought to know that. We ought to ingrain that within our minds that we are God's people. God's never going to leave us nor forsake us. I don't care what day it is. I don't care what the situation is. God's always going to be there. We got to know that for a surety. We got to know what God has for us. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 3. I know I'm moving you around a little bit, but the, this is what God wants you to hear. We need to be encouraged, not downtrodden. We need to know that God is about something. Proverbs chapter 3 in the Old Testament. You know where you find it at? 2 Corinthians uh, 5, 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. That only becomes true when we allow it to become true. That's right. Otherwise, we can stay in that old man all the time. We can act like an old man, move like an old man, think like an old man, and we can't accomplish anything. But when we allow that word of God to make us that new creation, that new creature that God wants us to be, then we're powerful. We're po more powerful than dynamite. <laughs> Proverbs chapter 3. My son. It says, 
Forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thy heart. So should I find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Trust. Let me say that again. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. And lean not into thy own understanding. You know, a lot of things we're not going to understand. That's right. A lot of things we don't. How can this be? How can this be going on? You know, why is this happening? A lot of things we're not going to understand. God says, in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. He's going to bring us through the storm. Yeah. He's going to make everything all right. Yes, Lord. He's going to let us know. He's going to let us be able to say, peace be still. Power in God's word. Power in the things that God has for us that God has made available to us. We got to exercise those, those things in our mind, in our actions, in our words. Let the world know we're about something. Yeah. Let the world know that, hey, it's time for the Christians to come out. Everybody else coming out. Come on, now. Come on Christians. Let's get moving. Where's God's army at? Right. We need to get ourselves organized. God's people be about something. Say, hey, Satan, you ain't taking over this world. That's right. The Christians are going to stand up and be counted. Let somebody know I'm about something. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm not just a piece of driftwood. Well, be not wise in thy own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It shall be health unto thy neighbor and marrow to thy bones. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruit of thine increase. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. My son, despise not the chastening in the Lord, neither be weary of his correction. So when the Lord knows you, lets you know that you're going the wrong direction, turn and start going the right direction. Don't be hard-headed. You know, the only thing a hard head gets you is a sore head. It doesn't accomplish anything else. Because you keep hitting your head against something. Going the wrong direction. Well, God's letting you know what he is going to do because Christ in you, the hope of glory is there. That spirit of God is going to try to give you wisdom. But it's your choice because we have a freedom of will whether we're going to go that direction or not. We can decide we're going to live peacefully. We can decide we're going to have joy. We can decide we're going to have all the fruits of the spirit. Or we can decide we're going to be most miserable. We can decide that. We can sit around all day and have a pity party and say, woe is me, what am I going to do? I'm going to call upon the Lord. Amen. I just told you earlier, hear my cry, O God, and tend unto my prayer. For the ends of the earth where I cry unto thee, when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to that rock that is higher than I. That rock that is higher than I. That rock that is that strong foundation. That rock that is that stableness. That rock that will bring us through any situation. Yeah. That rock could have let us know what to do yeah. when it's time to do it. Yeah. How to do it. Yes. And where to do it. Yeah. You can't sell God short. People are looking around saying, say, well, I don't know. It looks like God's doing anything. Where are you at? What God are you serving? You're not serving my God. God is most powerful, always. God is always going to be on the throne. Always. Satan wants to mystify you. Satan wants to deceive you. Satan wants to make you think that all is lost, that there's no hope. But I'm here to tell you once again, there's always hope in Christ Jesus. There's always hope in God's word. Always. Never going to change. God wants us to know that for surety. God wants us to know that he's about something. That he's never going to leave you. That he's never going to turn you around. Go to Ephesians chapter 4. These are powerful words here too. I'm going to go down to the 22nd verse. We're going to read a few verses here. This is most powerful. We need to know these things. 
I always say repetition is the best way for us to increase in knowledge of God's word. Repetition is the bo bo uh, best way to get the victory. When we repeat God's word, then we have God's word constantly on our minds. When we repeat God's word, we have the word of God constantly within us. The word of God is propelling us. The word of God is leading us. The word of God is allowing us to be victorious. When we're not being stayed on God's word, then we don't know where we're going to end up. We're going to be turning around, going in circles. Verse 22 says that you put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. What is this old man that the scripture is talking about? The old way of thinking, the, old, the worldly thoughts, the worldly actions, the, the worldly the words that come out of our mouths. That's the old man. The new man is what I talked about in 2 Corinthians 5, 17. That new creation yeah. that, that God has, has made available to us. That God has allowed us to have. That, that, that brings about our actions to be victorious. It says, verse 23, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. How many times do you need to renew your mind? Constantly. Constantly we need to renew our mind. Get it focused again. Get back on the course where we need to be because it's easy to get off course. There's so many distractions going on now in the world. So we need to keep a focus, get ourselves back on track, renew our minds constantly. We get off a little bit, go back and renew your mind again. Say, Lord, I got off course a little bit. Lord, get me back on course. I thank you in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Get me back on, get me back in that focus, Lord. Lord, I, I was feeling a little bit depressed and downhearted. Lord, get me back on course. I don't need none of those medications because uh, I had to deal with all the side effects. You know, that, that down there in small print, you know, they got all the disclaimers. You know, it may kill you, but you know, take it. You won't have a headache no more. <laughs> no worry or fear. To put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness, wherefore put away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor. We are members one of another. Now here's the big one here. Be angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. He said, well, no, I just let him have a little bit, you know, so he'll leave me alone. Satan doesn't work like that. You give him an inch, you're going to take a mile. Don't give him no place. Don't allow him to get in your mind. You know, go through the windmills of your mind. Shoving you here and shoving you, blowing you this way and blowing you that way. Keep him out of your mind. When you find him trying to creep in, slam that door shut. Let him know you have no place here, Satan. I'm not going to be depressed. I'm not going to be downhearted. I'm going to be lifted up. I'm going to be victorious. Because God's already allowed me to be there. And I'm not going to come out of that comfort zone. You know, I may come out of my, my self comfort, comfort zone, but I'm not going to come out of God's comfort zone. I'm going to stay in the arms of God. I'm going to stay where the Holy Spirit can lift me up and encourage me and give me that peace that passes understanding. I'm going to stay there where God wants me to be. I'm going to stay there where I know at the name of Jesus, every knee must bow. Of things in heaven and things in earth and things beneath the earth. I'm going to stay there in that comfort zone. I'm going to let the world know I'm about somebody. I'm not going to be ashamed to let people know I'm a believer in God. That Christ sent me the hope of glory. That I have confessed Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I'm not going to be ashamed of that. I'm going to let people know I'm about somebody. If you don't want to get on board and move out of my way. Neither give place to the devil. He's running to and fro, seeking whom he may devour. Don't let him get you. Don't let him devour you. Put him in his place. Let him know that you're a child of God. You've been purchased by the blood of Jesus. You've been purchased by the blood of Jesus. Let people know that. 2 Corinthians 5.20 says, Now, then, we are ambassadors of Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. 
Ambassadors. What's ambassadors? Representative. We're supposed to be representatives of God. People are supposed to say, see the countenance of God in us. They're supposed to see the attributes of God in us when they see us. Because we're supposed to be God's people. They're supposed to see above and beyond even the fruits of spirit in us. They're supposed to see power working in us. You know, we don't have to, should not have to run and try to get ourselves together, get ourselves back in fellowship when it's time to pray. We should already be there. We should already know that we're about something, that we're ready for the, the battle. We're ready for the victory. God's already given us a victory through Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. Satan can't deal with that. Satan can't deal with Jesus. Jesus already beat him. Yes, Lord. He's already been defeated. But you got to let him know. You got to remind him every day that he's defeated. Get out of my way, Satan. You're defeated. You ain't about nothing. Get out of my way. Get out of my mind. Get out of my life. Get out of my household. Get away from my job. Satan, you ain't about nothing. Move out of my way before I step on you. I'm going forward with Jesus Christ, the hope of glory. I'm the one that's going to defeat you because I have Christ in me, the hope of glory. So move out of my way. You ain't about nothing. You're little. You're a little league. You're not a major. You're a little league. Jesus already knocked you down to size. Remind him of that. Let him know about that. Look at the uh, third uh, chapter of Ephesians right quick. So this is getting so good. I'm about ready to dance up here. <laughs> Ephesians, the third chapter. Let's go down to the 16th. I'm just going to read a couple of verses here. 16, 17, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by the spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye being rooted and grounded in love. Rooted and grounded. Isn't that powerful word, rooted and grounded? Yeah. Something's rooted and grounded. You know that it's fat, hold fast. And that's going to change that. Praise the Lord. Romans 12. If you turn there right quick. I'm winding down here, believe it or not. Romans chapter 12. It says, I beseech you therefore, brother, in the first verse, by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by renewing of your minds, that ye may prove that what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say through the grace given to me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according to as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. God has dealt us a measure of faith. We had the ability to believe, to put in the action. But it's our responsibility to put that faith into action. It's not going to do nothing if we sit down and say, whoa, it's me. We got to get up and motivate ourselves to put that faith into action. When things look impossible, know that God is a God that deals with impossible things. Nothing is impossible when we put our trust and our faith in God. Those things that look hopeless, put our trust and faith in God. Know that God's going to bring us through. God is a God that wants us to be people that are people of action, not to sit down. Now, we can't sit down and wait on somebody else to do that. God's called us to do. God has called us to a mighty mission. God's called us to reach out. God's called us to motivate ourselves to get up and do something. You know, we have a great task ahead of us. We got to make sure that we're doing what God wants us to do, not what the world wants us to do. The world is hoping that we do nothing. And we set back. You know, slowly, slowly, look around you, slowly, all the liberties of the church, all the liberties of the Christians are slowly being taken away. But we're setting back, relaxing. Oh, they've set back. Oh, everything's great now. Everything's ha I'm uh, fat and happy. 
We need to motivate ourselves knowing that we cannot let our guard down. It's our responsibility to motivate ourselves to know that every day is a task for us to do. Get up in the morning and say, Lord, what's my job for today? Lord, what do you have for me to do today, Lord? Where do you want me to go, Lord? What victory, Lord, am I going to get today, Lord? What mountain am I going to move out of the way today, Lord? Who am I going to march over today, Lord, that's in my way? Expect that God's going to work a mighty work in you every day. Expect those signs, one of the miracles of God's already promises in his word. Know that God is a God of action. God is a God that has fortified you with the word of God. He didn't just give us the word of God for us to say, oh yeah, I read that. Oh yeah, I read that. Oh yeah, I read that. What are you doing with that which you read? What are you doing with that which is in your mind? You know, I always say that our minds are like a big library that stores information. As you pour our information there, it gets stored in your mind. But when you get more information, you know, that which you store before gets pushed further and further back. The most prevalent information that you let in is, is, is closer to the front. So you need to make sure that the word of God is closer to the front. That, that those things that God says are available to you are closer to the front. So you can exercise those things. You know, I tell people all the time, do not allow yourself to live in fear. And that's easier said than done because there's so much going on. We're bum being bombarded every day with so much fear. But we got to tell ourselves over and over again, Lord, give me strength. Lord, give me power. Lord, give me direction. Lord, give me the victory. Because God's already told us that he's a God that will give us that which we need. He will never leave us. Second Peter 1 it says, all things pertaining to life and godliness, God has given to us. Hebrews chapter 11. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. You don't have to see it to believe it. Know that it's coming to pass. Know that this pandemic is going to come to an end. Know that. Or either Jesus is going to come back. One or two. Soon and very soon. We are going to see the king. <laughs> know that. Put some joy in yourself. You know, you know, get yourselves all heaped up with the word of God so you do a little dance around. Let the Lord know that you, you hear him, that you know him, that you love him, that you believe in him, that you're ready to exercise that which God has given you. Let him know that it wasn't just a waste of time. For you sitting out here in the Word of God, that you weren't sleeping all through Reverend Blue's sermon. <laughs> Let the world know that, hey, I'm someone to be reckoned with now. Hey, I'm someone you better watch out for. Because I've got a full steam. I'm moving. I'm moving toward God's purpose. I'm moving toward that which God has called me to do. I'm not going to sit down and wait for the world to pass me by. I'm going to do that which God has called me to do, which is what God wants us to do. This is something. Real quickly, go to 1 Thessalonians 5. I'm going to close here, believe it or not. 1 Thessalonians. Chapter 5. Is everybody there? I'm just going to read a couple of verses here. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. But when they shall say peace and safety, then suddenly destruction come upon them and travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in the darkness, that the day should overtake thee as a thief. You are the children of light. Let me read that again. You are the children of light and the children of the day. You are not of the night nor the darkness. Therefore, let, not, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. 
For they that sleep, sleep in the night. They that are be drunken are drunken in the night. Let us who are of the day be sober, putting on a breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. Those those powerful words. Those powerful words. We're not the children of the darkness. We're the children of the light. Everywhere we go, there ought to be some light. Even if we go in the midst of darkness, there ought to bring about some light. Because that light is in us. It's not a little light. The light's in us is a big light. Would I shed some light upon us? And in Mark 11th chapter, it says, um, Whatsoever things ye desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and ye shall have them. Isn't that powerful words? Put them into action. Put them in your heart. Put them where God wants you to be. And I'm going to close with that. I know in the midst of everything that's going on, you know, you never know. You know, always, uh, we always open up the doors of the church. You know, for those that may not know Jesus, I don't take for granted anybody in my presence or anybody that may hear this, even on the tape, that doesn't know Jesus. It's very, very simple. God's made it very simple. He says in, in Romans 10, 9, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. It's very simple. So search your heart. Search what you've been doing or haven't been doing and make some corrections. Make some adjustments. Praise the Lord. Just another day that the Lord has kept me. It's just another day that the Lord surely has kept me he has kept me from all evil with my mind stayed on him it's just another day that the Lord surely has kept me.